This is Pony Prepper Bill. Today is Saturday, May 1st, 2021. And in this video, I want to talk about the Rockefeller Foundation and the scenario booklet that they have out. Today I want to talk about something that I came across like a year ago. I think I mentioned it in one of my other videos. I don't think I made a video on this specifically, but I was copying stuff from one computer to another, and this file kept popping up for some reason, and I started to read it again. Scenarios for the Future of Technology and International Development. This, this plan if you remember, Event 201 happened a year before the pandemic, and it was about a possible pandemic happening. This came out in 2010, and it's scenarios for the future, what could happen. And they talk about things that are going on now with helicopters or planes. This is all, these are scenarios. Uh, published in 2010, scenarios, scenarios of the future about technology, questions, scenarios of things that could happen in the future. I'm going to put a link in the description below for you to, to read this, and I'll tell you what page number I'm reading from, but it, it's 50 pages, and it talks about all the things that are going on now, just like Event 201 predicted pretty much everything that's happening right now. And it talks about the Rockefeller Foundation's use of scenario planning to explore technology and international development has been both inspired and ambitious. Let me skip through some of this stuff. There's an introduction here. For decades, technology has been dramatically changing not just the lives of individuals in developed countries, but increasingly the lives and livelihoods of people throughout the developing world. Now there's basically four categories in here. Lockstep is number one, clever together, hack attack, and smart scramble. Lockstep, a world of tighter top-down government control and more authoritarian leadership with limited innovations and growing citizen pushback. So let me go here to page, page 18, scenario narratives, lockstep. They talk about, in here, I'm going to read some of it. Uh, they're talking about, now this is made in 2010, and they're saying in two years would be 2012. Uh, the pandemic, they talk about the pandemic. Uh, even the most pandemic-prepared nations were, quick, were quickly overwhelmed when the virus streaked around the world, infecting nearly 20% of the global population and killing 8 million in just seven months the majority of them healthy young adults. The pandemic also had a deadly effect on economies. International mobility of both people and goods screeched to a halt. Debilitating industries like tourism and breaking global supply chains, even locally. Normally busting shops and office buildings sat empty for months, devoid of both employees and customers. Isn't that what's been happening? Now, this was made in 2010. They talk about the pandemic blanketed the planet. Uh, the virus spread like wildfire in the absence of official containment protocols. But even in developed countries, containment was a challenge. The United States initially... The United States initial policy of strongly discouraging citizens from flying proved deadly and in its allegiance accelerating the spread of the virus not just within the u.s but across borders however a few countries did fare better china in particular the chinese government's quick imposition and enforcement of mandatory quarantine for all citizens as well as its instant and near hermetic sealing off of all borders saved millions of lives stopping the spread of the virus far earlier than the other countries and enabling a swifter post-pandemic recovery. 
China. Wuhan, China. Here's another one. I'll, I'll, I'll try and put some of this on the screen. China's government was not the only one that took extreme measures to protect its citizens from risk and exposure. During the pandemic, national leaders around the world flexed their authority and imposed airtight rules and restrictions. From the mandatory wearing of face masks to body temperature checks at the entries to commercial spaces like train stations and supermarkets. Even after the pandemic faded, this more authoritarian control and oversight of citizens and their activities stuck and even intensified. Oh, even after the pandemic faded, this more authoritarian, oh my God, I can't say that authoritarian control and oversight of citizens and their activities stuck and even intensified. In order to protect themselves from the spread of increasingly global problems from pandemics and transnational terrorism to environmental crisis, crisis and rising poverty, leaders around the world took a firmer grip on power. This goes on. This whole thing, I'm on page 19. There's 50 freaking pages here. And it says right here, uh, at first, the notion of a more controlled world gained wide acceptance and approval. Citizens will, willingly gave up some of their sovereignty and their privacy to more paternalistic states in exchange for greater safety and stability. Season citizens were more tolerant and even eager for top-down direction and oversight this goes on and on and on i mean i could read this whole thing to you but i i, I don't want to I, I can't see first of all but this explains everything in here step by step of things that are going on i think you should read some of it just pull it up on your computer and just thumb through it by 2025, people seem to be growing weary of so much top-down control and letting leaders and authorities make choices for them. Where is it? Headlines in lockstep. Quarantine restricts in-person contact. Cellular networks overloaded. Intercontinental trade hit by strict pathogen controls. Immigrant caregiver gap with robots. Then they talk about the technology during lockstep. Scanners using advanced functional magnetic response imaging, fMRI, technology become the norm at airports and other public areas to detect abnormal behavior that may, that may indicate antisocial intent. In the aftermath of pandemic scares, smarter packaging for food and beverages is applied first by big companies and producers in a business-to-business -business environment and then adopted for individual products and consumers. So I'm going to try and make this video short. Um, I went on and on and I'm trying to read some important things, but I don't leave certain things out. And it's hard to do. This, this thing is just so big. If you get a chance, look this up, print it out, read it, whatever you want to do. But they talk about so many things in here that are happening and possibly they could be happening soon they talk about a world pandemic they talk about china lockdowns store closures employee problems food chain disruptions supply disruptions masks even after this world pandemic happens everything they put in place stays there like surveillance they talk about tracking with phones communication breakdown possible communication breakdown for years meat shortages they talk about making fake meat vaccines some vaccines uh, were fake or had troubles and people a lot of people didn't trust the vaccines and weren't giving them to their kids and there was a problem with that they talk about emissions greenhouse gases they talk about climate change they talk about the UN gets new levels of authority. They talk about surveillance, smart cities, and how the citizens are willingly giving up their privacy. 
there's so much in here. So let me know in the comments below what you think. Is this just bullshit? Is this just a scenario? Or is this scenario playing out? Or are they making this happen? Like Event 201. This is Pony Prepper Bill, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.